for 19 days, fire has raged out of control inside an open-cut coal mine that supplies one of Victoria's biggest power generators. Tonight, for the first... <laughs> Well, for 19 days, fire has raged out of control inside an open-cut coal mine that supplies one of Victoria's biggest power generators. Tonight, for the first time, we hear from one of the men who are fighting it. It's horrendous. It's the worst fire I've ever fought in my life. It's like working in the mouth of a volcano. Peter, not his real name, has been a professional firefighter for 26 years. But this blaze is like nothing he's ever seen. It's demoralising for firefighters because we're, we're working at guts out. It's just really slow, hard, and you get a wind change and you've lost all the work you've done. The city of Morwell is about an hour and a half's drive east of Melbourne in the Latrobe Valley. The 14,000 people who live here sit just a few hundred metres from the power station that generates a quarter of Victoria's electricity. And the massive coal pit it uses to generate that power is a blaze, with literally no end in sight. They're pouring water onto it, but the water just runs straight over the top of the coal, so it's not absorbing the heat and it's not putting the fire out. Peter asked us to conceal his identity because he fears repercussions for speaking out. What he and hundreds of other firefighters are battling is the work of a suspected arsonist who lit several fires on a horrendously bad fire day on February 9th. The fallout now is a thick, black, toxic smoke and ash that rains down on the homes of those who live nearby. Our house is just like that thick of ash. There's been no order to evacuate yet. Still, authorities say those who can leave, even for short periods, should do so. There's free health checks and many people are feeling the effects. Sort of sniffing and sneezing, sort of watery eyes a lot. 200 metres underground, where the fire slow burns its way through the coal, monitors keep tabs on the levels of carbon monoxide in the air. It changes constantly. Any reading above 75 and firefighters have to retreat. Now I've been in a situation where it's peaked to 480 parts per million. We're all coughing our guts up. All of us, our eyes are red raw. Uh, our noses, you're blowing stuff out of your nose for the next couple of days. Your throat is red raw. Fire trucks are parked around the perimeter of the pit on structures called batters. In places, the batters too are on fire underneath. The clay that seals them gets slippery when inundated with water for the firefight. Water also gathers at the base of the pit and has to be pumped out, sometimes manually. So they had to go into the waste heap in the water. We were pumping this black, sticky, honey-like substance, which was supposed to be water. It was blowing our pumps up, clogging up our pumps. It's a battleground where the enemy is often unseen, buried beneath the surface. But what's at stake here isn't just the health of those nearby, it's also protecting critical infrastructure. This is our community and our whole state that's at risk here. Everybody's scared what's going to happen in the future, you know? Like, we're not worried about the short term, um, we're worried about the long term. If this only goes for another two weeks, I would be wrapped. But I'm tipping we're looking at another two months. At, at, at least. And he'll return to the firefight alongside his colleagues soon because there's simply too much at stake. We realise the catastrophic consequences to the state if we don't do what we're doing. My wife's asking me not to go and I just tell her I've got no choice, that's my job. Craig Lapsley is the Fire Services Commissioner for Victoria. Craig, we've just heard some serious claims. So why were we being told up until yesterday that the fire would be controlled in a fortnight, yet those on the ground say it'll be far longer? Yeah, that's a, that's a reasonable assessment in the sense that uh, it's taken us two weeks to get to this extent and we hope that the next two weeks would be about the same. We've got about 50% of the fire out, but we're starting to find that uh, the fire's more deep-seated in coal. So we're up against it. Our aim was certainly another two weeks, uh, but we think that's the best-case scenario and it's potentially going to be longer. So are the residents of Morwell being lied to? Uh, no, it's not about lied to. It's not not at all. It's it's about a dynamic environment. It's about a fire that's uh, that's not doing what we'd like it to do. It is frustrating for Morwell community, and you really got to you got to put your heart out to what it means to Morwell because it's uh, it's been a long two weeks for everyone in Morwell. Craig, are your firefighters also in unnecessary danger? We've been told that 15 firefighters are still awaiting their test results after they waded into waist-deep sludge 
four days ago. Yeah, we've worked through with the firefighters. They've all been offered medical support and we're in the final stages of getting the water um, test now. So uh, we're going to speed that up because obviously health and safety of our firefighters is critical. Uh, we don't put any firefighter in any unsafe situation. Um, but it's not good to have claims where our firefighters have uh, had to paddle work around what could be contaminants. Craig, how bad does it have to get before a full-scale evacuation of the township is enforced? I think the issue that we'll look for for the Chief Health Officer to tell us in the next uh, few hours, if not the next day, will be about the aggregate of the amount of ash that's fallen, particularly in uh, Moore South. Uh, we're being told it's not a long-term health risk, but could offer some irritants to eyes and skin in the short term. But uh, there's a lot of ash. It's on the streets, it's in the backyard, it's on the pool, it's on the roofs of houses. I think that might be something that uh, in the next 48 hours or so we'll see something um, that will be a little bit more definitive about what the Chief Health Officer is going to offer us. Mm. One thing's for certain, you've definitely got your work cut out for you over the days and weeks ahead, but Craig, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, help us understand it. Thank you.